So here I am with Megan from Atlanta. That's so nice to have you here, Megan. Thank you, Rosie, and so much for having me. It's great to be here. You're an experienced speaker, so I want to learn from you. How was it for you to break through the fear of speaking in public? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, there were a couple different sort of periods in my life where I recognized uh, I had some fear around speaking. Uh, the first time that stands out to me was honestly probably in high school. It went that far back. Um, so getting in front of a group and presenting on a topic. Uh, I remember having a project and I had so much fear uh, of standing in front of that classroom. And at the time, when I look back at it now, uh, I had to sort of internally coach myself at the time as to why, why am I so fearful? What am I worried is going to go wrong? And at the time for me, and this seems so silly, but I was in high school, it was being in front of a room uh, and having popular people in the room that I thought might judge me. Uh, so at the time, uh, it was a project I was very passionate about, and I knew that. Uh, and I sort of talked myself into recognizing what is it exactly that I'm afraid of, the judgment perhaps coming from other students, uh, but what is it that I want to achieve? What I wanted to achieve was sharing uh, the passionate project I had researched, uh, and I wanted a good grade for my English teacher. Uh, I was never really great at getting high grades, and I thought this was a time that I could really blow it out of the water. Um, so I chose to sort of, instead of focusing on the fear of what others would think of me, focused on what the outcome could be, and I knew I could really uh, do well at this. So I sort of channeled that energy in that direction, and I think that totally changed my path in terms of how I felt standing in front of audiences going forward. That's awesome. So instead of focusing on the fear, you focus on the message that you had to share and the outcome of that message. That's even more because, okay, after I share this, what can happen, right, through them learning and, and me here connecting with these people. So you emphasize mm -hmm. on the connection and the learning experience more than the, okay, they're looking at you or I'm, I'm, being, I'm being judged. Right. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, I know that was so long ago, <laughs> but it definitely was something – uh, it's sort of a turning point that I always think of when I think of how I'm in front of groups now and recognize that that was a point um, where I changed how I thought of things before I got in front of a group. Um, so I think on some level, I still do that a little bit today, um, which has been very helpful. And, you know, that's so cool because a lot of people will resonate with what you're talking about because that's exactly what happens when you're in front of people and I, I call it the me syndrome. You start thinking like, oh my God, they're looking at me. I perhaps I don't look right. You know, I'm not speaking correctly or whatever it is. You get so much focus on you. So I'd like to ask you, how would you coach someone as a coach? How would you help somebody break through this fear? Yeah, I think for me, um, it would definitely be sort of using that same sort of methodology. So really helping them get really clear on what is the message they're hoping to share. Um, What's that going to do for them in their life as well as the lives and things, uh, I guess, when it comes to impact they can have for others? Um, and working on some sort of method to focus more on that outcome versus the actual physical being in front of people. Um, I know a lot of us, especially as coaches, but other people as well, have a passion uh, that we want to share with others. And oftentimes the biggest way to get that out into the universe is to speak in front of groups of people. Um, so sort of helping them recognize the impact it can have if they overcome that fear. Um, and what that will bring to them in their life as well as the impact it can have on others. Um, so sort of channeling that energy to a more positive aspect uh, as opposed to that uh, sort of excruciating or crushing fear that can hold you back. Yeah, I think the tendency is really when we are in the process of fear, it's really like to curl down and, and, and shrink and play small. And as a coach, you help them to see the, you know, the importance of showing up because if you don't show up, for your business, for yourself, who is going to do that, right? Right. So it's so important. Like, I, I know I also had to break through fear many times. And mm -hmm. I still do every time I'm in stage or yeah. I, you, know, I, you have to yeah. see the people. And mm -hmm. you always like have to, there is a little sensation in your body that we call fear. But I think it's a, if we drop the fear kind of label and you say it's a sensation that I'm feeling here. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Let me use it to think about what's my outcome. What right. can there for these people and then yeah. all of a sudden like, the energy changes and you're connecting mm -hmm. with people and it becomes more natural yes? yeah it's like the energy as opposed to saying i whatever i'm feeling is fear uh recognizing that whatever you're feeling means you care about what you're about to do uh but using that as energy to actually show up in a way that um will sort of enliven the audience so that the audience will connect with you because they'll feel the energy and passion you have for the topic um and i think it's really easy instead to focus on the fear 
um, and the sort of physical reactions that you might be having, um, instead of charting those in a direction that's actually helpful, that will make people help connect with you, uh, which I think is, I still, there's many times I still have to do that, and I've been speaking in front of groups for years. Um, so I guess that's sometimes the unsexy truth is that they may not go away. You will probably always have some type of energy before you're getting up in front of a group, and that's okay. That's normal. Yes. So Megan, tell us your favorite quote or saying that can inspire our audience today. Yeah, uh, this is actually, this is a fun one, because I, uh, when you asked this, uh, you know, beforehand, and for something for me to think about, um, I didn't really know what my favorite quote was, uh, but I do have one technically tattooed on my body, oh, um, my which I was like, I guess that's probably it. Um, so it says, this too shall pass. Oh. Um, so it's just a <laughs> simple, um, so I think it's technically from the Bible. Um, I don't necessarily consider myself a very uh, religious person, but um, it's something that a family member of mine used to say uh, for many, many years. So I grew up hearing this too shall pass often. Uh, and I just think it's a nice reminder that, um, you know, the meaning that it had to me at the time was that uh, if things are or feel negative or terrible, they'll pass, I think is helpful. Uh, and it was only a couple years ago that someone had uh, sort of pointed out to me that it could mean two things, either that wherever you're in that feels uncomfortable will pass, but also that the things that feel good uh, or the moments that you're having that are enjoyable, those also will pass or can pass. So sort of like live in the moment and enjoy where you're at, which I thought was a nice sort of double meaning for it. Um, so lately I've taken it to mean both. Um, that whatever you're, happen whatever you're sort of experiencing, whether it's good or bad, recognize that it's just a moment. Uh, and so show up how you can in the moment uh, that makes the most sense, that feels great for you, um, which I kind of enjoy. Megan, I love it, and it's so true to live in the moment. I mean, when we, we really focus on being present in the moment, it's everything that we, our life unfolds so naturally, right? But yeah, for sure. Too much of, a, of some idea, we will probably burn ourselves up. So, and I like the, the saying that uh, this, this, this will pass, this too will pass, because everything is transient. Yep. No, no day is like another day, and, and we are never to be compared with anybody else. So that's right. like an important message to make sure we live in the moment. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much, Megan. And Thank for you, you are watching this video. If you need a coach to help you speak better, you know, drop all your assumptions and expectations about fear of uh, public speaking, you can contact Megan or myself to help you on this path. All right. Namaste. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roseanne. Have a good one.